Hey everyone, welcome to our Zoom meeting. It's good to see you all. Hello Bobby, Billy, Buddy, Brandon, and Butch. Okay, let's start with some policies that you should know about. We are switching the color of our tank o-rings. We think beige is more positive. It's a warmer color than black, and so we're going to change all our o-rings in our tanks. So that's the difference between using aerosol sprays and essential oils for air fresheners in our dive center. Okay, question time. So does anyone have any questions? Just ask a question. Any question. Any question at all. Why do they hate me? Hey, Mark, welcome to the Dive Locker. It's great to have you here. Now, it's great to be here, Tech. Thanks for having me. We go back a bit of a way. Yeah. So uh, it's nice to, you know, be in contact again because it's, it's, it's been a while, but lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Likewise. It's so cool. And, um, you know, I've been following you for years and what you do professionally. And um, I've already told the audience about you and, and your bio and everything. It's remarkable. You've got a great career and your expertise is in an area that I believe is so important for dive professionals, scuba mm -hmm. instructors, because we have to give briefings. We have to teach in front of classes. We, we do all kinds of things where we are truly doing a lot of public speaking. And in that, body language is a huge part of what we do. And so if I'm cold <laughs> diving, right, and I'm showing that I'm cold, what do you think is going to happen to all my students? They're all going to be cold because I'm shivering and cold. But if we just recognize that how people perceive us and see us is, uh, it's just more than, um, than meets the eye. And I think that that's something that you bring out so wonderfully in all of your content, everything you do, your book, uh, your courses, everything. And so that's why I wanted to have you on the show to be talking about that, but also talk about at this particular time and age. So welcome to the show again. And it's, it's just an honor to have you here. Oh, great. Look, great to be here. So look, uh, answer me what you need to know. I'm, I'm yours. So, um, you know, what's m most on your mind and your audience's mind, I guess, around this modality and this technology and this situation that we're in of now there's more demand or need um, yeah. or for training people or holding meetings via video. In some cases, it might be the only way to do it. So, you know, yeah. what's on people's minds? Yeah, that's it. So I think that, you know, really right now what's happening is that we're seeing this shift from very outgoing and hands-on um, communication skill sets that we do as dive professionals that has been kind of restricted because of all of this, this uh, quarantining that's going on. But the two things that have emerged are that we're seeing dive centers and dive businesses hosting their staff meetings via Zoom, Skype, et cetera, so in a virtual manner. And then we're also seeing that because so many of the scuba training agencies already have a platform that is all about e-learning, that now the dive agencies are having the instructors and recommending that the instructors get together with their classes in a virtual setting so that they get that personality and that know-how back and forth with these others so that they're comfortable when they do go to the pool and when they do get on the dive boat so that they've already had some experience with their instructor. And so because of that, that is also done in a virtual setting. And um, so this the tips that you have that have gone from the stage presence to now the virtual, 
I think are remarkable. I'm using some of them myself yeah. <laughs> because they're just awesome. I'm doing it in staff meetings and in teachings. So tell us, give us some tips for dive professionals that are conducting their meetings and or their classrooms via online. Yeah, so let me pick up on something you said there in order to give you my first tip around this. Yeah. And that's the idea that um, there's a demand there for trainees to get to know their trainer, their tutor earlier on, to build yeah. a relationship. Now, the interesting thing is, is it's only via this modality right now that you can get instantly into my home. This is where I live. Okay, you're right. in my home right now, and you're in what we call in body language, personal space with me. Yeah, especially as I lean forward into the camera here and look yeah. right down that camera lens, and I'll give you some stuff around that in a moment as well. But you've got to recognize this is the advantage that you have in this video world, is your, your, your students, uh, whoever you're meeting with, are gonna flick on that switch immediately, yeah. and there's a moment where their brain is going to go, well, if this person is this close, and we're in a home environment for them, we must already know them really well. And we call that, in the world of influence and persuasion, quick set intimacy, which is that little <laughs> trick that happens on the brain, okay? okay? So you need to put some stuff around that, but I wanted to highlight that first of all, because often people have seen this situation as a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And to the live, you know, face-to-face -face in the real world, it does have some disadvantages, but let's not even talk about those. All we're gonna talk about today is the advantages that this brings, because yeah. I understand what it must be like, uh, you know, for all of you out there, because you're going, is my guess is, is, is like, if you're in that dive world, you're somebody who loves the real environment. You're somebody who literally immerses themselves in that real environment. And you're used to kind of having a, equipment and physical stuff to do and physical people who you're gonna place in certain places and help out. It's a very, it feels like a very physical world for me. And so this world could feel very alienating, could feel very Antisocial. My guess is, is the diving world is a very social world yeah, because it's it full is. of experience. Yes. Right, it and is. it's about having that experience and then talking to your friends and family afterwards about this, you know, great experience that you had. And this can feel so alien around that, but I've got to let you know it it isn't. If you can use this equipment to get yourself closer into the camera. And here's the key is get really good eye contact down the lens. And here's how you do it. You get, a, you get a, an ordinary post-it note like this. You get a big fat marker pen and you do yourself a smiley face like this. Okay, and you're probably already noticing as you look at this smiley face, I've seen your face smile yeah. even more. Show, show, yeah, me, show me yours, well, here's show me what you got. Here. There yeah, you go. Technique right I, here. <laughs> I, like, I like yours has got a little triangular nose there as well. It's superb. So you just stick this behind your camera. And what it does is it brings your eye contact up into that lens. Yeah. Okay? Because there's a lot of distractions going on. I'm even distracting myself. You know, part of me is watching your nonverbal communication. But imagine I've got a class of, you know, 10 people. I'm sure that might not be, you know, out of the ordinary for many of you kind of watching or you tech and maybe it's more, maybe it's less, but let's say 10 people, 10 little images of people is completely going to overwhelm your brain as to what is going on. True. True. So you need, they're all doing something different. They're right? doing <laughs> or, <laughs> or they're doing nothing. And that's even worse, because yeah. when insufficient data, our instinct defaults to negatives, yeah? We are not uh, optimists. Like, I don't know, my guess is on your, on your equipment, you, have, you probably have uh, gauges, don't you? Probably looking at, at pressure and levels of, of, of um, oxygen mix, I guess. Right. If, if the gauge isn't giving you any data, are you optimistic or are you pessimistic? Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm a little concerned. Yeah, a little concerned. You're pessimistic. You don't go. You don't go. Oh well, you know what? I filled up the tank earlier, so chances are it's full. Just the gauge isn't telling me that. Mm-hmm. No, it's like no. This is insufficient data. We have to be pessimistic about this. And that's the way our instinct works. It's a survival mechanism. And it wants wants you to be alive today, accurate tomorrow. It doesn't care about accuracy. It's just doing a gamble based on pessimism. And so when we watch those images moving, okay, number one, too much movement, we get overwhelmed, okay? And, uh, And not enough movement, and we go, well, this can't be good. Right. They obviously don't like this. Oh, they're, right. checking out. they're all they're probably, you know, that's a still picture. Probably the signal's down or they've put up a picture of themselves and they've just disappeared. You know, they've left me. You know, they're, they're leaving the course completely. I've utterly failed. Okay. Look, you can't let that happen to yourself. And so, therefore, you must concentrate on your own performance, your own communication, reaching that audience down the lens okay and communicating to them and i call that leading not reading so do not try and read the body language okay now in in the in the real physical environment you're mirroring body language a lot anyway so you'll get a you'll get a a good strong feeling so like you were saying to me uh you know earlier look you know if i'm shivering as the as the trainer if i'm showing uh, nervousness or or cold, lo and behold, all my students <laughs> are doing are doing the same. Well, because you're the leader, because you have huge status, you have power, and their instinct goes, well, follow that one, follow that one, and we'll be okay. <laughs> so of course, that mirror is go- mirroring is going on. You're able to see how they're mirroring. There's lots of unconscious information coming you you will literally be able to smell unconsciously if somebody is very very nervous around you and you've probably experienced that yeah, somebody yeah. coming into your space and you've instantly gone yeah they they're, they're in a they're in a they're really in a bad way they don't like this at all there's something up yeah but they, their face might be full of like oh I'm, I'm really this is going to be great but there's something where you where you feel that fear so don't read in this situation lead in this situation okay get really good contact down the lens the other thing i want to tell you because before i come back to you and get your feedback on on all this is is you've got to stop using your laptop as a laptop Mm. when you're on camera let me give you an example of this because i'm just going to switch my cameras uh here to the integrated camera on my laptop so here i am and my guess is 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 this is the majority of um of calls that you're on at the moment uh you get to see up my nose it's not a bad nose but but you shouldn't really have to look up it all the time i have height dominance over you you can't see my context you're just seeing my ceiling and other stuff and equipment Uh, it's not helpful for you so look here's what i do about about this is I take my waste paper basket yeah, and I throw out the content, okay? That's, that's just really excited my dog that's down here. Just got all the paper to mess around with. So, um, so now I place it on top of the basket like this and there I go, that isn't that way, way better? And it cost me a waste paper basket. That's, that's all. You can do a you can do a bit more of a fancy setup, um, you know, which which I've got here. I'm going to change cameras again, right. and all I've got is a completely separate um, USB camera in front of a computer monitor, and gives me a, a, a little better camera quality, and but but means that I can actually see you. I can move your image tech That's just right. right next to the camera. Right next to the camera. And right. I can kind of see you and I can look down the camera at the same, at the same time. Exactly. So those are, those are just some very simple setup ideas. But the one I really want to pay attention to is build, use this camera for what it was really designed for, which is close up intimacy rather than the long shot. Anyway, give me, give me some, some feedback on that. Well, I love it. Everything you're saying is resonating. Of course, I had the uh, the, the privy of, of 
you know, studying what you've, you've talked about before. So in my preparation, um, you know, I'm on a desktop right now, not a laptop. So I've got the height advantage of a desktop, but I'm short, so I have to put two pillows on, <laughs> on my chair. Oh, oh, just go. one, just <laughs> one for me, just one. So I have to elevate, because I got the chair cranked up as high as it will go, right? And so that's what becomes this, let's get this an eye level, kind of use that three quarters uh, mark for the eyes, like they yeah. teach me photography and videography. So that's, that's it. There. And yeah, I mean, I could be distracted looking down here. I could look over here. I could look at all these different things that are on my desktop right now. But I am choosing to frame you within this so that you're right under, under the, 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 the lens, the camera. And then I'm also gazing up higher and using yeah. that little reminder uh, note right here to smile and keep that presence as well and you're, I doing a great, you're doing a great job there because it, it works okay. really well it works really well um and and also i want people to note you know if anybody who's who's able to watch this and if you if you're just listening to this that's great as well but do try and get on the video version of this and have a look at it but uh your background is excellent because it it, it frame it puts you in a context for me right. and yeah. it's not like I can see everything in detail but there's enough shapes there that my brain recognizes oh I think coral a shell uh, some yeah. dolphins I think you know um, yeah. I think there's some some dive equipment this looks like yeah. a the, oh, okay, yeah. Right? yeah so look how you know and I don't know this world very very well but look how I'm able to see enough stuff to go okay I feel comfortable about the world that we're in right now my guess is is that pennant at the back or flag has some yeah has some the dive flag exactly uh -huh. yeah yeah oh that's a dive oh so when that's up that's to let people know that there are there are divers below is that correct? that's right that's right that's brilliant that's brilliant yeah. well i yeah. think that's that's brilliant framing and again you know take a lesson from from that i've got i've got things like books on body language around and i write and the books that i've written and you know right. pictures of my kids and and I got things in the background that you know how kind of big they are. You know how big a lamp is. You know how that they're probably the same lamp. So you get an idea of scale and how big yeah. stuff might be. Um, you know, there's bits of branding up there without having to do some kind of virtual background, which is plastered with my brand. It's just kind of ideas <laughs> up there. Uh, ideas that I might travel and be interested in, you know, interesting shapes and carvings and stuff. Right. So think about the backgrounds as, as well. Anyway, sorry to jump in. Personality, right? What was your thought? Yeah, your personality is coming out in that. So it's both your professionalism and your personality. So, you know, I especially love how you frame that with a lot of times we're doing this from our houses. And if we're doing it from our houses, we're inviting people in as guests. So we should almost uh, entertain them in that same way and not be, you know, so buttoned up that we can't show this or that or the other thing or the dog comes in the room and it's okay yeah that's all good yeah yeah in fact in fact i would say it's actually really important super important um because because if if i'm in your home and you don't show me i mean i'm not expecting to walk around your whole home right <laughs> but if you're like oh no don't look over no okay just stand at the door and I'll just talk to you and stand at the door and look at the ceiling and I'll talk to you. <laughs> like, that would be weird. And equally so, you know, notice how in this situation here, though, though I'm meant to be the person kind of providing the help and the understanding. I've got kind of the expert status right now. At the same time, it would be antisocial if I didn't ask you questions and comment about you and say, what do you think? And it would be antisocial if you didn't talk back to me. If I said, hey, um, you know, what's that flag? And you were like, <laughs> I'd be going, okay, we've got a problem. Exactly. Because, you know, it's a normal thing. I mean, if it's not for me to know, at least yeah. you could say, it's actually, you know, it's very private. Uh, <laughs> though, it, though it's on display it's something that I don't tell 
right. anybody. <laughs> so I'd be going, oh, okay, that's kind of weird still, but okay. <laughs> but at least you're talking to me. And what often happens on some of these trainings is you've set up a situation where it's like, well, I'm the expert and I'm going to deliver you the knowledge. And you're like buying the knowledge or, or there's a, a certification that means, you know, you have to have the knowledge and I'm the person who must give it to you. And therefore, it's this one way street where I just keep talking at you and you do nothing. You're just passive. Well, what, what have you come round to my house for that for? Like that's, that's just antisocial behavior. So I've got to find ways of asking you questions, still keeping it pro professional. So I can say things like, you know, out of what I've just said there, give me some feedback. You know, what was most important about that? Or what are you most going to remember when you come to doing your video calls? Yeah. So actually, let's do that. Let me give you some, let, give me some feedback on, on that. What out of that, that stuff that we've been through so far, what sticks most in your mind at the moment? Well, I love it. I think that it's the techniques, but what you're bringing here is a, there's this crossover between the professionalism and the personal side. And I think that that's a really cool thing because of this uh, interaction that we're doing. Um, the, also, the personal side is that when we're going to sit on a couch and have a conversation with each other, we're at the same level. You brought up that, hey, look, if we just have our computer in a different spot. Now I'm looking down at you. You're looking up at me. There's a, a psychological rift that's going on there. And yeah. that might not be comfortable, especially in the different peer relationships that exist within the workplace. And I love that, that you brought that out of it. And then also, I think the piece about, um, you know, connecting on this very personal eye contact level. I've noticed that in so many meetings that it doesn't happen. And right. there's that looking down that takes place, but then there's the scattered looking all around. And then the piece that you just said about engagement. Yeah. Um, this is a wonderful technique that I'm seeing in webinar after webinar. Okay, I'll take that back. <laughs> I'm not seeing it enough in webinars, <laughs> right. right? When a person, you see it in the really good professional ones, when the person's engaging for about four minutes, five minutes, in that eight minute mark, about every eight minutes or so, it's a question, hey, hit me up in the chat room. What do you think of this? On and on and on. And it's that feedback, even if it's a huge group and you can only do chat. But otherwise, there needs to be that, or you're, you're, you're just so right. The other day, I fell asleep, literally, right. in a Zoom meeting, right. and my buddy texted me on the phone and was like, wake up, man. And I'm just sitting there, and I looked at myself. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, no, everybody just saw. My <laughs> I, I was dread, you know, horribly embarrassed, but the person was talking so long that I kind of lost it. Right. So my guess is, is you didn't feel included. You don't right. feel socially engaged, so you're not going to intellectually engage. Right. And look how simple it was for me to just throw to you and go, so just, you know, give me your feedback. What, are you, what have you got most so far right. from exactly. this? That's called a hierarchical question. It suggests that you've got something. I just want the most, <laughs> the most important ones. Okay, so your brain instantly engages and goes, oh, great, I've been asked for a hierarchy. I'll, I'll give that. Okay, and a hierarchy of the most positive things. Look how you end up reiterating the content. Mm -hmm. So you end up reteaching the content during that. You get super engaged. You've got peers on the call as well who are going, oh, that's, that's, that's a student just like me as well. Oh, look how he gets it. Oh yeah, I get it the same. Look how, how we're, we don't all need to be included, but we have to see our peers included okay i also get feedback on how good my teaching has been so far because you're letting me know here's the points that i'm getting now i might go oh uh oh these are these are three points that really like you'll fail if that's <laughs> if those are the three points and i'm able to go so those are really good points here's the ones i really want you to re remember from <laughs> you know i've got a way of of reiterating that or i can just yep. go You've absolutely got it. If you remember those three points like you did, you're going to be away on this. Like you're, you're going to do fantastic at yep. this. 
So exactly. very simple, very simple technique as well. Look, exactly. what, else can I, what else can I tell you? What else is on well, your mind? You know, one thing that I thought was really intriguing, and you are doing it at an exceptionally great level, I'm trying, but it's the whole theory of notion, uh, motion and framing. Yeah. And that your body language and the hand gestures become a very animated part of your communication skills. So when you point to the camera or when you're referencing something, there's a lot of motion. And I think that that's an important element too that you go over because in the time I fell asleep, the person was just looking down a camera and motionless the whole time and you saw the same background. Yeah there's an engagement to this body language and motion. And you were saying it in, in your training that this comes from a, a century of movies, yeah. you know, and action and movies and framing yeah. things. So tell us about that. Well, it basically comes down to the idea of animation, which, is, which comes from Latin, anima, which literally means life. And um, you are used to seeing live human beings unless you just, you know, show up for your training at funerals and, and look at dead human beings yeah, and, and you, you'll know like it's very easy to tell the dead ones from the live ones because the dead ones just don't move it's it's one of our it's part of you know biology the idea of a uh, uh, merring which is how do you tell if something is alive there's an acronym merring and the m stands for movement if something's alive it moves okay <laughs> everything alive moves so it's one of our primary ways for working out is that a living thing or a dead thing mm -hmm. does it move okay mm -hmm. now so so look i'm moving quite a lot because i'm demonstrating this to you i'm not suggesting everybody should you know move as much as me for sure but um uh you know the reason i'm moving is that you're used to looking at, at media on your screen and you're used to it switching shots quite a lot okay you're used to it to going from one speaker to another speaker to another speaker you're used to changing scenes um and in this it's just a picture of me and the background doesn't move for good reasons i don't want it moving it'll distract you okay but you do need to see some life and i'm especially showing you a lot of open palm gestures as well so actually, let me just give you a couple of sentences, uh, the same sentences, but with different nonverbal communication around them, okay? Um, and let me do my approximation of something from your dive world, uh, which, is, which is, look, um, trust me, when we get in the water, you can trust me that I'm gonna be there for you and you're gonna be absolutely safe. Look, trust me, when we get in the water, you can trust me that I'm going to be there for you and you're going to be absolutely safe. You're going to be absolutely safe. You're going to be absolutely safe. Right. <laughs> do you, do you know what your yes. brain does with insufficient awesome. data around the hands? It goes, yeah, I don't, mm, I don't know. I don't know. You don't, I can't see your hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so look, if, yeah. if that isn't enough of, a, of an, in, so you must show um, more data uh, a little more of the time. I'm not saying you need to be super animated in the frame all the time like I am. I'm trying to keep your attention for a, for a long time here and demonstrate this. But honestly, if you're a talking head like this, yeah, for more than eight minutes, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah, you, you can't... You, listen, you are competing with content. Normally when somebody puts on their their monitor now they're usually watching netflix and netflix are are you know using millions of dollars to create those images yeah <laughs> you're up against that the brain goes okay this is a tv show come on it's come on what you got what you got <laughs> you're up against that so you better come with 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 something i hope that makes sense to you Oh, it does. It says so much. Uh, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I think any other tips and techniques that come into making it a more dynamic and lively experience from the communicator, um, that helps. And then to also drive that interaction is so valuable. Um, I just did a podcast episode on um, doing trivia. 
and you know having all the students go to at one point their phones and getting on cahoots and then here they are answering pre-done trivia questions nice. and it becomes this competition and then we get to engage but if you do those trivia questions right they become educational too yeah depends yeah. on your topic we've done it where it was just all about a person or all about a topic so i think that you're so right on that engagement that is that is big one other thing um that uh, that i wanted to talk about or have you talk about was lighting mm. how important is lighting in framing you as uh, in your in in your whole virtual experience what do you do yeah. Well, so look, here's the way our eyes and our brains are built. We look to the light, not the dark. <laughs> That's, we, and in film, we know if you want the audience to see it, you light it. If you don't want them to see it, you don't light it. If you want them to be scared of it, you half light it. Mm -hmm. So they can't quite make out what it might be. Because then they know if there's a bit of movement, uh, it's alive, but they default to negatives around it. Uh, there, is, there is the most expensive light you can get for filming is sunlight. Mm. That's the most expensive, that is the highest quality light you can get and film crews will fly all over the world to get the best quality light, the best, the best spectrum for the longest amount of hours in a day. Okay, um, so look I've got sunlight and it's a cloudy day outside here in Toronto, overcast, but I've got sunlight coming in on my face. I suggest people do the same. And look, if that means you've got to alter some furniture around and, and switch your desk around, do it. Just do it. Just Or do it for these moments where you've got to get online. Just do it because, because they will look to the light here, not a half light. Look, the one to really avoid is the bright light behind you. Yeah, that's, that's what we do in films or TV when somebody's joined the witness protection scheme. <laughs> it's like, and you don't need, there's no trust in that. There's a lot of drama, but there's no trust in, in that. So we got to see your face. If you can't get daylight, then get domestic lights and, and put them on you know, a desk in front of you or wherever, and get them onto your face. If you want to make the most of that light, find yourself a big piece of, of card. Yeah, I've got this one, which was my son's uh, science project until recently. And you get that and you put that on a chair or something next to you. Uh, you can see the closer it comes, yeah. the more my face lights up. And it just adds, you know, just a little bit, uh, a little bit of light. Um, around us, you know, so, so get, I've got some other fancy lights here, but that's really because um, uh, I'm doing this 24 seven, you know, this is now all I all I do. And sometimes I'm doing it two o'clock in the morning, because I'm speaking to people in Europe. So and it's and it's dark outside. So I have to have some lights uh, to kind of make sure that uh, I'm, I, I do have some light. But that's, right. that's the fundamental thing. If it's not lit, they can't see it and they won't like it, you know? Yeah. We've had this metaphor for thousands of years of light is good and dark is bad. And that's simply because uh, we can see more in the light and in the dark, we're more at risk from predators. So it's yeah. as simple as that. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, night dives, people are, are, are way more kind of edgy, excited than in, in yeah. day dives, is that correct? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, and you can do a lot of great things with your light as well to, you know, make it excellent or really bad. Yeah, well, so you got, you guys have got like a goblin, right? You guys have got some some bright lights, I guess, that you use now and again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Grab one of those, bounce it off a piece of a, a, a white sheet. Yeah. Something like that. You'll probably find it's yeah. a super good floodlight. That's a great point. Yeah. You throw it on a white, then it's going to illuminate better and not be. Yeah. Or, I mean, test it out. Test it, test it bouncing off. Yeah. And test it behind something like a sheet. So it's, so it's diffusing the light yeah. as yeah. well. I mean, yeah. it may even work like super harsh on your, on your face and it actually might do the job. I don't know. You'd have to experiment with it. But, yeah. but chances are you've got some equipment out there that would do the job for you. Absolutely. And you know, I think what you're saying is so important too. I was just on a staff meeting not too long ago and the individual 
it was basically sitting in a room where they kept their laptop and there was just one light right above them. And of course it was a laptop. So the head is down. Yeah. The light is up here. The whole face is dark. Yeah. And you just can't see anything. The, it doesn't feel right. The communication's off and then the background is brighter than the person. Um, so just making simple adjustments like what you're saying on the natural lighting, on artificial lighting. And, you know, I've got a combination of light outside my patio right here, but also artificial lights. Going to Amazon and grabbing a couple LEDs, they are super cheap these days. Yeah. And it does help this. And I really think that this is important for people that are in positions of authority. And so that could be management and higher, but even if you're an instructor and you're teaching a class, you really want to have the best game going on on that whole meeting. And these are just absolutely wonderful techniques that you've gone over, Mark, to, to you know, just cue us in on how to make this, what we're doing right now, more professional. Good, good. Well, look, it's important stuff. You, you know, anybody who's in that dive world, my guess is, is that, is that you know, there's risk involved. There's a, there's a lot of risk involved. And, and you know, for, for people to have a high level of fun, there's, there's often a high level of, of risk. Or to get a job done, an important job done, which involves a dive, my guess is, is there's, there's risk involved. And so, so people need to listen to you. They need to get the information. And so I think it's, it's partly your job to make sure that you've set up that environment so they are more likely to get that information from yep. you. Yep. I love it. Well, this has absolutely been great. I thank you so much. There's just so much value here. Mark, how can people follow you and all the many things that you do? Yeah, so really easy. You'll find me at truthplane.com, T-R-U-T-H-P-L-A-N-E.com, and you'll find that in the show notes yep. as well. So go over there. You'll find me there. If you're on LinkedIn, Mark Bowden, find me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to link in with you. Ask me questions. I'm also going to put in the show notes a link to some online training that I have, uh, which is about exactly this, so you can get even more around this. And I'll make sure you get a really good uh, deal on it as well, uh, price-wise, because it's, it's important stuff, as, I, as I've said before. So I love anybody out there who is in that training community or who runs any kind of dive operation of any sort to get hold of this information, because, you know, this isn't going away. <laughs> This is going to be here for a while. And even when we can get face to face even more, my guess is, is you might want to use this in some circumstances, but not all, because you've actually mastered some of these techniques. And now economically and time wise and position wise, it actually makes some sense to you. So look, we will get back face to face. There is nothing that ever replaces that. But there are some advantages to this. So we'll give you the, uh, the link in the show notes to go and get that training. That's awesome and very generous of you. Thank you so much. I know for a fact our dive professionals out there can benefit from this. It's an area that you, know, you teach about it in the um, instructor courses and dive master courses, but it then goes away and you're on your own. I think the mark of a true professional is to always better yourself. And just these tips today are gonna to make our virtual meetings much better, but also our in-person meetings because there's so many of these tips that relate to in-person that I think that that's just gonna be remarkable. So uh, yeah, we'll put all those, those uh, links in that for the training in the show notes page. And I also wanted to tell you, my wife is a clinical psychologist and she teaches at a seminary. And so I was talking about you and oh, this is my next guest for the show and everything like that. And she said, well, I use his TED Talks in my courses because it is the most brilliant, most brilliant uh, teachings on body language. And so she's teaching pastors how their body language affects congregants whether they're giving a, a, a sermon or whether they're meeting one-on-one -on -one with somebody for some really hard discussions. 
and how important their body language is. So you have a huge fan in, in my right. wife too. She was like, oh, I, I, right. I see him all the time. I'm using him every semester in my classes. I'm like, yeah, Mark's well, I'm awesome. Really, I'm really, really glad she's, she's using that because it, it's great in those environments. And, and as uh, I was saying this, I uh, train at, a, at the uh, university here for the um, PhD in um, yeah. theology. Uh, in the same stuff. So so it's great that she's found uh, how to use that for herself. And oh, that's her, awesome. Uh, science colleagues. Well, you rock, Mark. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this, this podcast and this episode and the vlog. So remember, there are two versions of this. If you're listening on the podcast, you want to go over to the Scuba Guru channel on YouTube and watch the Beyond the Standard vlog episode that is just about this and it's in person. So now you get to see you get to see Mark and you get to see what he's talking about. So for those of you that are only listening to it on the podcast, go check it out on the other side as well. Well, thanks again, Mark. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your time and all the best to you in all your professional pursuits. You're doing some great things. Thanks so much. Happy to come back anytime, by the way, and see you again. Great. Thanks, Mark. Yes.